Hi, this is Ed back again with another supporter video for everybody on Patreon and Subscribestar. Thank you all for your support, no matter where you do it. You keep this channel running. Of course, this video is mirrored on Patreon and Subscribestar. I've got an investigation here on five things we know about giants, or at least the idea of giants, from actual explorers specific to a certain region so let's just really get right into it first some brief context for number five here in regarding giants of course they fill all of our legends it's important to emphasize this because they are literally in every single culture where you whether you go to china whether you go to the abrahamic texts either the bible whether you go to uh, Scandinavia they are in all of our cultural systems in fact you can also find them ingrained into artwork or at least in reliefs of course you might have seen them there even in Egypt they show giants or what look like huge individuals in front of small individuals now obviously this could be an artistic representation but nonetheless they're everywhere the reason is why why are they denoted everywhere is there some kind of lineage of giants on this planet? Some people grow extremely tall due to genetic abnormalities that is in the pineal gland in regards to hormones and things like that. Other people grow tall because no one really knows apart from their genetics. But there is, apart from really tall people in our society at seven feet, those are literal rarities. There is stories in the ancient scrolls and histories that giants were a race of giants. That is, there was a populace of giants uh, at different pockets around the world, which literally preyed on human beings. In the Bible, obviously, you've heard of the Nephilim and uh, things like that. So we're going to get into a bit of that in a specific region I'm concentrating on. Of course, I can't cover the whole entire world here in one video, but we're going to go into a specific region. It's important to note, as I've stated in the past before we get into it though, there could be massive uh, evidences for giants. There could be. It could be all hidden. For instance, the Vatican secret archive or the Vatican archive itself roams for a mile, they say. These are all just filled with text, documents, manuscripts, uh, accounts from people, including artifacts that have never seen the light of, light of day in hundreds of years. So that is something to think about. I'm only going to go into things that I think that are interesting or provide some kind of account in terms of evidence, at least a, at least testimony, which of course is the weakest type of evidence, but it's still something interesting. I'm not going to go into pictures, etc., which of course can be manipulated. I'm not going to go into archaeological kind of wonders, which imply that there were gigantic people as well. So this is specific to documentation. Okay, specific accounts from history. So let's just really get into number four here, which is the region I'm talking about. This is Patagonia. This is uh, an interesting place with a lot of different things going on. Obviously, it's huge. Uh, you're talking about the uh, a huge sway of land there in South uh, America, uh, which, is, uh, which was a place which a lot of explorers went to, especially in the uh, 16th century. So let's have a look through some of the texts. Before I get into the texts themselves, I just want to point out this. A number of accounts I've seen on this, this is where I got start, started here on a specific forum. I've seen a post on Reddit Conspiracy. Of course, I've had an interest in giants and researching them for some time. But I just wanted to put this link up here, which I'll post in the description here of this Patreon video or on Subscribestar. And so you can go to this location because it has more in this wonderful post rather than just giants. Okay, there's a lot of interesting things going on there. Some of it you might completely disagree with. Some of it, though, is quite interesting. So uh, let's have a look at this here. So this is the region. Why am I talking about this particular region, Patagonia here, or the Patagonian giants? It is because it's been a long-standing uh, field which people have brought up in regards to giants over and over and over again because there are many different testimonies of people that have gone to this region at least within the histories and accounted that they saw uh, very tall people 
Now, the mainstream uh, academics will tell you these are all hoaxes, as it says on Wikipedia here. Okay, what they're saying is that the people of the time back in the 16th century were hoaxing things. Maybe they were, maybe they're not, but they are interesting accounts, and they are accounts of people that specifically should know since they were on board the vessels that did the exploration. Now let's have a look here. So you've got a number of accounts here, as you can see in screen. We're going to go into uh, John Byron. Of course, the region is beautiful. So let's just go to number three. Now I've got all that out of the way and go into some accounts. This will take a little bit of time here. So the first one I want to talk about is by an officer on board uh, an actual ship. This was the ship called the uh, Dolphin, which was uh, commanded by someone called John Byron. This is actually the nephew of the famous Lord Byron, apparently from uh, you know literary fame. There, the famous uh, poet, uh, and, uh, and so on and so forth. It's called a voyage round the world in His Majesty's ship, the Dolphin. This is commanded by the Honourable Commodore Byron, in which uh, you know. Uh, the crew fell under the command of and is written by an officer on board the ship itself So let's have a look here is John Byron who commanded the ship specifically and now let's get some to uh, some accounts from the actual text It's south there is just on screen for reference purposes Here you can see here is some of the text here from the English manuscript as the discovery of the gigantic race of Patagonians is one of the more uh, curious and extraordinary particulars of this voyage, the editor imagines it will be proper here to lay bef uh, before the reader what has uh, been uh, said by the authors of the voyages. It's very hard to read some of these uh, letters and things like that because what's happened is in the uh, copying of it, uh, some of the uh, text has fallen off the print there. Indeed, one of the most... Uh, uh, Consequences of the voyage is putting an end to the dispute which for two centuries and a half has uh, probably between geographers in relation to all of this has basically said giants are not true. And they talk about here in relation to the reality of there being a nation of people of such an amazing uh, stature of which the uh, concurrent uh, Testimony of all on board the dolphin, including uh, Tamar here, Tamar here, can uh, now leave no room for doubt. You could probably try to read that better on screen. The basic narrative, and I've got an encapsulation coming up, so don't worry about that, is that the narrative of the manuscript includes these accounts, and I did read a number of pages in regards to giants and giants being real. Now the interesting takeaway from this is if this officer, and remember this is an officer on board a ship, and that was a very serious role back then, who wrote this account was lying, and he's actually saying that it's the word of all the crew on board the Dolphin commanded by John Byron there. Do you not think that would be a dishonor in an age where dishonor uh, was taken highly seriously? Nonetheless, modern uh, scholars call all this a hoax. Okay, so there's some more text on a screen which you can uh, read for yourselves uh, as we uh, take a look forward. Uh, well, well, before I go on, I just referenced the, the passage about the giant. I forgot about that. Um, so here they're talking about a Spaniard on his return home because it's an account of another account uh, from South America who had brought along with him from that country a giant about 11 feet high who died in the year 1559 uh, and so on and so forth and the bones he uh, can't read that who took uh, a measure of them and then there's an appendices as well so what happened uh, not surprisingly is when actually uh, John Byron wrote his account it didn't seem to mention the giants so that is the actual Admiral's account. But it is interesting, because what happened with this, as you can see in this next passage, is when this account came out, and this is from that link I showed you, there was a lot of people that were upset with this. They thought it was ludicrous, okay? This rumor that there was lots of giants, so on and so forth, living on this island. So it could be the case, if they did find giants, 
And I'm not saying they did, that later on the captain decided in his own memoirs he'd leave that out and save him the sting of humiliation. This is a serious individual. But um, he did not come out and directly dispute, as far as I'm aware in my research, the accounts of the officer involved. So here is uh, some uh, interesting things here, as you can read on screen. Uh, this is the Strait of Magellan there, quotes of gigantic stature, monsters in human shape, then examined and measured by Mr. Byron. He represents them in general as stout and well proportioned and assures us that none of the men were lower than eight feet. Now, this is via an officer's uh, Charles uh, Clerk uh, uh, their letter to the Royal Society in which he says this. So this isn't uh, directly in the manuscript. When, when Byron, John Byron, wrote his account, he said that everyone was, you know, six feet tall. Uh, well, he said, said pretty much there was no giants, uh, pretty much. There's no account, I believe, of Captain Byron actually saying it, unless I'm completely wrong, at least in my research. So I'm not sure what this person's actually alluding to there. I believe they're alluding to the account of the actual officer. That is the officer accounting as to the actions of Captain Byron, okay, who by the officer's account had to stall, who was six feet tall and had to stand on tippy toes and stretch his arm uh, in order to reach the top of the naval's head. Uh, the native's head, sorry, so that would put the person round probably if you're six feet six, uh, your arm is at least a few feet, so that is uh, extremely tall. You know, we're talking seven, seven feet, eight feet tall, I would say at least. Well, maybe seven feet something. So Byron, according to this, wrote that one of his officers was astonished upon perce uh, perceiving himself, though six feet two inches high, became at once a pygmy among giants, for these people may indeed uh, more properly be called giants than tall men. Some people, uh, as I stated in modern times, call this entire thing the uh, you know, hoax of a, uh, an officer with uh, a fantastic mind. Although, like I said, honor was taken very seriously back then by an officer. Now, if it had been just a normal crew member, I probably would have said, yeah, I mean, they could make stuff up and laugh about it in the bar. But an officer in those times wines and dines with other officers. So if you're lying about the testimony of people on your crew, that is in terms of the officers and their captains in a book, then that is extremely serious. But nonetheless, that's how it's seen today. So here is another account here. Uh, that's written in a, a language which I'm not going to bother trying to uh, understand. But here is the uh, translated uh, here in regards to uh, John Byron uh, in regards to a note. And here I'll just read it here. So when Captain John Byron returned home in 1766 after circumnavigating the globe and the dolphin, his man, you know, that bo the boat we referred to earlier, Rumors spread that he had seen a 10-foot tall uh, giant in Patagonia. English artist and novelist uh, uh, Horace uh, Watpole there published an account of giants later discovered in a letter to a friend in the county cashing in on the giant craze that was sweeping England at the time. And this individual here, the prolific French historian, writes in a 1756 uh, book there, which you just seen cited uh, there, the coast of the port here is inhabited by giants 15 or 16 palms high. I have myself measured the footprint of one of them on the riverbank, which was four times longer than one of ours. I have also measured the corpses of the two men recently buried by the river, which were 14 spans long. Three of our men were later taken uh, by the Spanish. It's a small uh, thing there. Now, it could be the case that he's making it up cashing in on the giant craze, but just because you're cashing in on something, because you're in a, fe a fevered, uh, you know, fevered nature of writing and ah, oh, doesn't mean you're doing it just for the money. It could be the motivation because, of course, he was excited by actually seeing the actual, uh, the actual footprint itself. So here is a description in regarding the book just named that was written by the officer, the sailor, in the introduction 
released within the book there was giving a patagonian woman a piece of bread for her baby and uh and could only was his head was only as high as their waist so they're denoting these are uh, real giants. I mean, if they were real, they would be enormous in size, uh, at least eight feet or probably eight feet high, I would say. Let's jump over to Magellan here, the famous explorer. As we leave the accounts and whatever happened there with uh, John Byron and his crew and what the uh, extra, you know, the kind of narrative that came out there, whether that's real or not. Here is an interesting uh uh, you know, interesting thing here because this is written by uh, an individual which is known through history as a uh, scholar and explorer, Antonio Pegafetti. Pegafetti, I believe. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm not even going to try. You can look all these books up by yourself, read them, research them if you feel like it, and come to your own conclusions of the information. They're all available online in. Uh, various forms you know have been scanned forms because they're so historic so here's the actual individual here on wikipedia for context now the difference between it being an officer which is you know a serious role with honor on john byron's uh, crew there you know honor meant way different things back then than it does today of course if you were called a liar back then you might challenge someone to a duel that's how serious it was. But here we have someone that's a, a serious Italian scholar and explorer, okay, and they wrote a book themselves. So what they did is they wrote this interesting case, okay, uh, talking about, uh, you know, their time aboard Magellan's ship, you know, the famous explorer, talking about their encounters with the Patagonian people. Here is some of that book right here. Uh, in regards to that. Now I've included this here in the passages before this I just want to emphasize before I go into this there was passages where they're explaining normal people that they cited okay normal people uh, around this region uh, normal people so they would describe them as people they would just describe them on how they looked so here they're describing something different okay remember this is a serious, uh, a serious uh, scholar here so this person citing how they were uh, pretty much anchored for 13 days at this place and uh, they, were, they were about to go on their way when uh, they saw this man beside the river. There we found beside a river men of the kind called cani, uh, well basically meaning a cannibal, who eat uh, human flesh there. And one of these men was as tall as a giant came to our captain's ship to satif uh, satisfy himself and request that uh, others might come. And this man had a voice like a bull. And while he was on board ship, his companions carried off all their goods, which they had to a more distant castle for fear of us. They were using kind of terms like castle. You remember, uh, they just mean their housing or whatever for fear of us. Seeing this, we landed 100 men from the ships and went after them to try and take some. But they made their escape, for these people made more ground in one pace than we could leap. Okay, so he's talking about the gait of their uh, leg span. And they went on to describe these people. I believe in these books, I've seen a quote from memory that they were very, you know, they're not normal height, they're, they're like, you know, six feet uh, sorry seven feet uh, eight feet tall or something i wish i had included that here but i couldn't find it amongst my notes in the said river and then they go on a bit about this but the main uh the main part about this is the the size of these i mean the the, the way that these people are described as actual uh giants themselves so here they describe 17 leagues uh okay in regards to how big the uh, river is where it enters the sea in times past these tall men into this river ate a spanish captain so on and so forth so they describe them as literally uh, men eating uh, people eating giants uh, that had a very large face painted round with red and his eyes were also painted round with yellow and in his middle of his cheeks he had two hearts painted he had hardly any hair on his head and they were painted as well so shaven kind of looking like 
the, the kind of native people around there as well. When he was brought to the captain, he, had clad, he was clad in the skin of a certain animal, which skin was skillfully sewn together. So clothing and all these things, the only difference is they were extremely uh, tall. Okay, very tall. This giant had his feet covered with skin of a said animal in the manner of his shoes. He carried a thick, or had a short, thick bow with a thick bowstring. <clears throat> um, and so on and so forth. You can, of course, pause these if you want to read more on screen or just track down these books on the internet. Uh, so on and so forth. So here, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Here are the uh, women, I just paused it there so I could scan through it and get a few details before going on. The women were said to be not as tall as the men, uh, but some were larger, I guess, uh, more hefty, uh, so on and so forth. Now, some historians have said, and it could be the case that my notes on them being eight feet tall aren't in the book, although I remember writing them down and distinctively saying it's possible I have a terrible memory. Uh, so it is, if we look on the counter narrative to it, it could be that they are calling these people giants like they referred to the castle. It's just people that are really tall. So that could be totally the case, uh, totally possible. So here's just another part here and you can see a bit more uh, information on them. There is pages and pages of this. Uh, but basically the uh, one of the giants uh, came back and they taught this person how to say some words. They account. And remember, this is the noted uh, scholar and historian of, on Magellan's ship. Okay, uh, so this is, and this is a famous account. This isn't obscure. A lot of people reference it. So you can find a lot of information on the internet about it if you just want an encapsulation. Uh, here they are, and they teach this individual. And then from uh, from accounts, what happens is this individual goes back and uh, passes away on the ship. Doesn't make it back, I believe. I haven't read the entire book. I just read the sections in which I can find the giant in it. So here's some other accounts as we go on. So this is from this link I showed you earlier of other accounts of seeing uh, these giants around Patagonia specifically. That post is massive. It covers all types of things, but uh, in regards to Patagonia. So 1591, uh, talking about giants, so on and so forth. He reported their great strength. It took 10 of his men to capture one native. Another one, and what I did is I took certain accounts and accounts I know of, and then I linked them and just researched them and tried to isolate the information. I haven't done that for all these accounts, but I'm assuming the random ones I picked uh, turned out pretty fruitful, so it's possible. Uh, I can't read, uh, you know, I can't read 15th century Spanish though, so that's, uh, obviously, I have limits. 1586, Sir Thomas uh, Cavendish here, an English captain, apparently stated, quotes, of a gigantic race as measured of one of their foot marks was 18 inches. Huge uh, foot, apparently, if that's true. Another quote here, giants, etc. going on about that. Uh, this person manages their... Uh, you know, uh, that they are 9 feet uh, 6 inches and 11 feet tall, so on and so forth again in Patagonia. And there you have it from uh, this individual here, who was an adventurer that, sail adventurer that sailed with the English captain. From the crew, we do get a lot of accounts, okay? Uh, there is a lot of accounts of these types of things. 1599, Patagonian coast. Savages, whom he thought to be about 10 to 11 feet high, and again, that is a Dutch captain. There's actually uh, an engraving by, I believe, on board that vessel. The thing is specific, might be that vessel or another one, but it is a Dutch one where they, uh, they are uncovering a grave. And there's a huge giant skeleton in it, and this is a this is a uh, an engraving of the time. Here's another one: is a Dutch admiral here, savages of gigantic stature, gigantic people who were continually making war upon other nations. He was told that not all Patagonian natives were gigantic, but only one tribe. Okay, uh, so that's the accounts you see throughout history as well. You know, it's not saying if there's a, a, a tribe, a giant people somewhere, that it's going to be the whole entire nation. 
it's just a specific part and you see this repeated. Here are some more here, uh, Peter Harrington from 1704, uh, captain and commander from France, quotes, saw seven of these giants in Gregory Bay on the Strait of Magellan, uh, so on and so forth, and then we've gone through Byron's uh, one. So let's jump to number one here. So as I've stated, and you might have remembered my video which went into the Heidelberg man at length and regarding that quote from the Smithsonian Museum talking about that there was a race in regards to Heidelberg men that were all over seven feet tall. Could I find that article again? No, I couldn't find it again. It's disappeared off the ether. In fact, the Wikipedia page has been corrected as well. It seems there's only a small mention of it. That's the Smithsonian and uh, Wikipedia. But the professor is still around, or at least one professor here, and this is from an interview in 2007. Okay, this is on Naked Science, and this is a Naked uh, Scientist, and this is an interview resource where these people interview scientists, and this is an interview with Professor Lee Berger there. Okay, uh, and he is, uh, he is an expert within this field. So let's have a look what he had to say about the Heidelberg man. I'm just referencing actual documentation well, people that are experts in the field that believe there was a race of giants. Because if you see one white crow, as the late, sadly, late Stanton Friedman uh, used to say, you find one white crow, that's all you have to find. Because if, it, if it's one example of it, then it can be repeated throughout nature. So here we are here. It's this person asking Lee here, who's the professor. What we're looking at is the most enormous femur, the bit that forms your hip joint. That's huge. As a doctor, I know how big they normally are. That's huge. Lee, they are huge. That's so big we can't even calculate how big the individual was. You would need to be an NBA basketball player to get someone of that height. Uh, someone like this would have been. Something like over seven feet tall. And then he goes, Chris, the interviewer says, you don't think this one's just an abnormality? And Lee, the professor, says no, because we've found a lot of them. Everywhere we find them, we find them enormous. There are what we call archaic Homo sapiens. Some people refer to them as Homo Heidelberg genesis. I can never pronounce that word. These individuals are extraordinary. They are giants. Now he's talking about the race of the Heidelberg man, which I did a video on it, which there were numerous individuals, as I stated just prior, that were over seven feet tall. In fact, the majority of them were over seven feet tall. They were indeed a race of giants. Okay, so he's saying as an expert in this field, they find the femurs all the time. Well, how come the modern world doesn't know about that? Why not? Where are these femurs? Well, I'm going to tell you an account of why. I'll tell you at the end of this video. I'm not going to interrupt it right here. Let's read a little bit more, and then I'll go into the account of archaeology, okay, which I know some, uh, some accounts here in New Zealand. I'll show you the, the psych there's a certain psychological barrier. One of the most interesting things was a fossil record reveals is that we went through a period of extreme giganticism or gi giantism. These were people routinely over seven feet tall. They were huge. He's literally saying in history there is evidence that according to him, and he's an expert in the field, a professor, I know you need like, I know it doesn't matter if someone's an expert in the field, okay, but... What else do we have? We have to run with our best uh, evidences, or at least testimony here, and this is from an expert saying that throughout our history there was times when we were giants. So you might say, where are all the skeletons? Well, they could have just been carried away, obviously, hidden in the Vatican archive. There's more than enough room there, or whatever archive. Here in New Zealand, to, uh, to show you the story, there was uh, a big thing a number of years ago when they found that uh, there were rat bones, okay, found on New Zealand, certain rat bones that could only be taken from another country, okay, and what that implied is the Māori, okay, and I know a lot of Māori people, uh, were not the first people in New Zealand. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, I don't know, but what I'm saying is that was enough 
for them to silence the media and literally take those bones and take them away and not let anybody do any more further tests on them. Why? Because it interrupted the narrative. It interrupted the narrative of all the museums. They would have to rewrite history if that was true. And they didn't want to do that. So what they did is they hid the find. Now, that's not a conspiracy. They literally did that. And it's, you know, in the news cycle itself. I mean, you can Google rat bones, uh, DNA, New Zealand, and you'll probably find it, something like that. If they haven't taken it out of Google, who knows if they do that anymore. But one of the problems, and if we get off that subject, just showing you that there's evidence that they'll do these types of things, is the fact of burial. Here's the problem. Now, if you wanted to find giant bones, and there's been many accounts of them found, whether they're true or not, I have no idea. But the fact is, it, it only comes down to whether if people actually bury their dead. If you leave something above the ground, it's not going to be around, you know, in a, in a hundred years, obviously. Predators will get to it straight away, so on and so forth. And not all cultures bury their dead. Some burn them. The other problem is, and I'm talking about an archaeological sense of having a big big number of these bones if they're around, is a lot of different towns uh, are built around rivers because rivers are seen as a life force. You can fish there, you have uh, clean drinking water. Well, if you're lucky, you have drinking water. The fact is, is that the sea level rises. For instance, we've seen in India, in the tsunami, uh, when the sea re uh, receded, Okay, after this, and you can tell it's building up into this wave that's turning into the tsunami, that they've seen ancient buildings out there uh, under the sea, you know, ancient struck. That's not a conspiracy. They're literally out there as photographed. The fact is, is that that's because people used to build closer to the sea before the sea level rose. About 12,000 years ago, after the comet hit the planet, which has been established now, it turned a massive change in the ecosystem and the planetary weather patterns, obviously, and it pulled the sea level up. And that meant a lot of coastal towns were under the water. So even if there are bones and buried uh, giants somewhere, they're literally meters or tens of feet underwater, okay, like 30 or 40 feet underwater. Who really knows? So that's another problem. So you, now you have to look to inland places. The problem is, is that we live in a world where everything's growing on the topsoil. So you don't have to be lucky to even find it if such bones exist. And even if the governments didn't seek to take those bones away. Uh, a disruption in culture that could cause panic and things like this is something governments take seriously. That's why they crack down, apparently according to the main narrative, uh, after, for instance, uh, the famous broadcast by Orson, uh, Orson Welles in War of the Worlds, which caused panic in the 1930s, they came in with new regulations in order to stop that, you know, stop what you can actually say. And when you had uh, a possible idea of a UFO panic, they came in and done something about that. So certain things found could cause panic, and they do take that seriously, and there is obviously a historical record for that. Anyway, I hope you like this journey into giants. Uh, and why is this picture on screen? Well, I just wanted to show how close these actual structures are. Obviously, I don't have to show you this. Everyone's aware of it to the actual sea itself, okay? So if that raises, I don't know, 20 feet, all that's underwater, uh, obviously. And so is all the, a lot of the trace of actual civilization being there if you fast forward a thousand years or two thousand years, okay? Um, in the meantime, uh, thank you all for your support of my channel, obviously on Patreon and Subscribestar. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the uh, dis uh, comment section. I'll post a link to that specific resource in the description as well. If you find anything new or any specific passages about giants or anything, post those in the comment section as well. I'd love to, I'd love to read those and I guess other people might as well if they're interested in this topic. In the meantime, thank you so much for your support. This is Ed from the Outer Light channel. Stay safe, of course, and I'll see you all later.